Hey folks, quick disclaimer about the audio of this particular episode. My microphone was a little bit lower than Will's, uh, but we figured that the imbalance in the volumes of the mics wouldn't make too much of a difference, but um, we apologize for that. And we were going to try to take care of whatever that buzz is underneath, but this was live and in another city. So we were adjusting to um, the environment and we had these technical difficulties, but we hope you liked the episode anyway. We had a great time at the Consumer Voice and now on with the show. This is episode 92 of the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast, live at the National Consumer Voice Annual Conference. The Nursing Home Abuse Podcast is dedicated to providing news and information for families whose loved ones have been injured in a nursing home. Here are your hosts, Georgia Attorneys Rob Schenk and Will Smith. Hello there and welcome back. My name is Rob Schenk. And I'm Will Smith. And we are coming to you live this week from the annual Consumer Voice Conference being held in Alexandria, Virginia. We are actually um, coming to you from one of our hotel rooms. We we had we got so much information over the course of the of this day or, or two that we wanted to go ahead and get everything recorded so that we didn't forget. Uh, but it's been great. There have been several sessions. Will Will actually spoke at a session. Yeah, we uh, we just got finished with a presentation. This is my second year in a row uh, attending the conference. It's my first year giving a presentation. I think it went well. We met a lot of interesting people. And um, it's always fun to come to this because, you know, having been in this, in this arena of elder advocacy, whether a CNA or an attorney for 16, 17 years now, um, well, I have a lot in common with, with these people, and I, and I always, I think they're the salt of the earth. So it's always, it's always a good time to, to meet them, hear what they have to say, find out what's going on in their state, and Con- exchange ideas. Connect with people that have actually been on the podcast. We, we've seen Richard Mollett. Uh, Richard Mollett, Melanie. Melanie McNeil, of course, who's the Georgia head of the long-term care program. Yeah, we, drew, we, we went a long way to see Melanie from Georgia. Robin, uh, uh, Robin Grant. Uh, we um, saw uh, Iris Gonzalez, um, a whole slew of, of yeah. guests that we've poached from the Consumer Voice Conference. Very happy to see them um, hang out, eat lunch, and, and, and learn and educate ourselves. I mean, we're, we're attorneys, and we, we are in one realm of this industry, but it's always good to see how another component of the industry works. How it was seeing the yeah. CMS regulations, seeing the law change. From the eyes of advocates, ombudsmen, yeah, um, the the elder advocates, it's 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 really fun. It's really interesting. It's very educational. And, and it's it's interesting to find out things about your own state that you didn't know. I was um, I was actually on my way to the morning session, and a woman stopped me and said, "Hey, you're from Georgia," uh, and she started telling me that Georgia is is actually one of the best in the nation at incorporating music into um, uh, treatment for Alzheimer's um, and dementia. And I, no idea, I, and I told her, I was like, I, I didn't realize that. I, I am so accustomed to, to dealing with the negative side of, of long-term care in Georgia uh, that I'm not familiar with the positive things that we've done. So apparently we are good at incorporating music. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, that's just one of many, many golden nuggets that Will and I learned over the course of the conference. Um, I think what would be beneficial for the listener out there is to um, maybe Will, we could go through yeah, let's maybe go. a couple of the sessions, just yeah. kind of give some quick recaps of the golden nuggets that we learned um, through, through the conference. But the, mm-hmm. the conference actually started off with a panel discussion on a topic that we don't actually address very much in the Nursing Home Abuse podcast. But um, the regulations and the future of regulations of assisted living facilities. Now, here's something that I that I actually learned, which was interesting, is that there really, from a federal level, is no standard definition of what an assisted living facility is, um, for the most part. I mean, like, and that's one of the struggles that one of the the panelists who works for the the, um, the government accountability office said is that that we had to start from a threshold from from zero in terms of how do we even rate these things if we don't know what to call them. And then um, one panelist from Ohio talked about how they're called uh, resident care facilities um, or 
if they're a smaller resident care facilities class two. So it's just, I think that was the one of the first things that struck me about this panel about the future of regulating assisted living facilities that we all have to agree just what the heck one is. And it seemed to me that the what they were describing, the the common the common um, attribute of it was that it was some place that housed senior citizens who were not quite in need of the same medical care that you would at a nursing home. However, that also seemed to be one of the problems is that there were a couple of places that did require as much care as a nursing home, but they still called themselves assisted living facility. An assisted and living then facility. What, was, what was pointed out by the panelists was that you're crying that you don't have enough money. Why are you taking pay or residents yeah. that require more care than, than you're supposed to be providing? Yeah. But what I thought was really interesting in this panel was that one of this one of the panelists, Anne Hopewell, who is with the Government Accountability the Office, GAO, the GAO, and she was talking about this long term study that was conducted on assisted living facilities, which again, like I said, started off with what what do we what do we define them as, yeah, um, and what they found out, and really is that they need to be regulated because there are no regulations right now, and there needs to be uniformity of of actually how they're regulated. That was yeah. the big the big takeaway was well, they need oversight uh, from just a from a general standpoint but so it's 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 basically the the case that assisted living facilities whatever these may actually be are in some ways in the same um, in the same place that nursing homes were before the 1987 nursing home reform act that's right so it's just a free for all wild wild west one flew over the cuckoo's nest who knows what's going on? And so some of the stats that she provided, um, number one is that 48 states, um, through Medicaid, 48 states are provided funding for assisted living facilities, which equates to $10 billion for 30, 330,000 residents, um, whose range, whose care ranges, or whose ranges of services uh, vary from state to state. Yeah. Um, but again, like I said, the kind of the, the, the point that she was trying to stress was that um, there's no uniformity in the surveys of these places, and there really is no regulation for the surveys. So, so she's one of the stats that she provided was that 23 states don't do not at all investigate uh, critical incidents, and then 26 states could. Uh, I'm sorry, I that stuff. One of the stats that she provided was that 23 states did not investigate. Uh, critical incidents um, and again some of the states did not have a proper definition or didn't you know didn't have a good understanding of what a crystal critical incident was and so you, I mean, you got to think about that in a nursing home when a critical incident let's say according to the regulations is is a violation of one of the F tags that could cause um, immediate jeopardy right it's something that's very serious like a failure to correctly pass out the right medicine. Um, there, the state surveyors know exactly what they're gonna do there. Here, they don't even, they're not even sure what the remedy is. They're not sure what the definitions are and they don't even report it. So you could have somebody in an assisted living facility making a serious mistake like passing out the wrong medicine or having the medicine set up in a way where it's likely to get improperly passed out, and they, they're not even reporting that. They don't even know what they're doing. So it's, like I said, again, it's, it's kind of the Wild West with these places. That's right, and so at the end of the day, the GEO uh, provided this information to Congress with, at the end of the day with three recommendations. Number one is that the industry needs guidance, mm -hmm. they need uh, standards, and they need um, to have states able to uh, provide the accurate data um, for those standards to, to enforce it correctly. Um, so, Which, you know, Congress still hasn't acted on yet. And I know that they just recently provided this. How long ago was this? A year? Yeah. A year or so? Year or so it, it doesn't matter if it was five years ago. It's still like we were talking to somebody in our presentation. Do you think that Congress is, is going to, to start looking out for the elderly anytime soon? I'm always skeptical. I don't know why it is. It's not a partisan issue. Uh, Democrats and Republicans both 
really fail the elderly somehow. Uh, and that's just a shame. That's right. And so, and that seemed to be the theme of the day in, in some of these, uh, some of these discussions. But yeah. Um, so that was uh, one of the first presentations that we were. Um, that was right after the the welcome ceremony. Everybody was in uh, the main ballroom. That's right. And so um, a little bit later on in the day, we had a update on CMS regulations and the federal regulations regarding nursing homes and. Robin Grant, again, um, did a very good job of explaining what was always, going on. Always great to hear from her. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like... Um, and then, of, yeah, go ahead. We're going to talk about the other presentations we went to. You you saw one um, that it was presented by an attorney. Yeah, so, um, so it was basically 20 years. The, the title of the presentation was 20 years... Of lessons learned by a nursing home abuse attorney. It was done by Joe Musso, an attorney yeah. in uh, nearby actually, Alexandria, in Virginia, Virginia, who's been doing nursing home abuse litigation for the past 20 years. Um, and it was fantastic. And as a matter of fact, it, it, spoiler alert, um, that presentation was actually recorded and he, you know, graciously, graciously allowed, allowed us to. Um, put that on the podcast and so I think in terms of the lineup and um, of the podcast I think we're going to roll that out yeah It'll probably be in January I think it's the second week of January we'll, we'll have that uh, published but um, it, he talks all about what families of loved ones and residents I'm sorry families of residents that are in nursing homes what they can do to help prevent um, abuse and neglect but he did a fantastic job excellent job Great job! I learned so much, but it, so I won't go into anything of what I learned in that in that uh, presentation because I want you guys to learn it first in January. Um, but Will, where did you where did you go when I was in there? Uh, so I went to um, to listen to Lindsay Heckler, who uh, is an attorney for the Center for Elder Law and Justice in New York. I right? this is a state thing. New York is doing. It. New York has has set up um, this organization, this Center for Elder Law and Justice, to start tackling a lot of the issues that require litigation against nursing homes. Um, So you've got your state ombudsman who can go in there and say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this, uh, or this is wrong, or I'm going to go call the state, uh, and they're going to come down here and maybe assess a civil monetary penalty and then you've got a state like New York that says well we need to increase the advocacy that we're doing because ombudsmen can only do so much so they have this um, this Center for Elder Law and Justice that actually does uh, litigation advocacy against these nursing homes they may seek uh, an injunction uh, against nursing homes in the state for doing a, a particular thing that they think is harmful to residents. They may seek an order requiring the nursing homes in, in New York or a particular one to do something. So it's very interesting how different states are tackling this issue. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to have or try to have Lindsay on in the future and, and talk about that because... Okay, we get Gene? Gene? Gene, Gene, let's get a get, hold of Lindsay. Let's get Lindsay. Get Heckler. Yeah, yeah, Lindsay Heckler, Gene. I didn't. I didn't get to make a joke to her about nobody heckling her during her presentation. Uh, Heckler. No, I, I get it, but that's super, super obvious. Uh, well, I don't. I okay. still like a good I dad. Hope you, so I'm glad that that didn't. didn't I like a good dad joke. Anyway, um, yeah. So it was. It's interesting. That's one of the interesting things about coming to this conference because states are, you know, for the most part, autonomous. And there's uh, 52 different um, entities. So there's 50 states. There's the District of Columbia. And then there's uh, Puerto Rico. Um, but it's always interesting to how these these different states and entities tackle issues of long-term care advocacy. So that was very interesting. And then I. Um, I got to see a little bit of Joe's, and it was very passionate, very good. Yeah, and like I said, uh, during lunchtime, um, there was a presentation by Robin Grant yes. and David Wright from CMS um, regarding uh, 
what's going on in, in Congress regarding nursing home care. There's yeah. a couple of things that I want to take away from what Robin had said. Um, number one is that um, uh, currently there is a uh, rule uh, under the Department of Labor, regulation on the Department of Labor, that individual staff members in nursing homes under the age of 18 cannot use um, power lifts on residents without supervision. And so there's now a proposed rule that's going to allow individuals under 18 that work at nursing homes to use these lifts without supervision, even though there was just a recent study that says that uh, by and large, people these age, this age cannot use these things appropriately. And I thought that was that's amazing that you know how the government can turn on a dime with regard to rolling back these safety regulations. And this is not even this is dealing with the safety of the worker. Yeah, really. you know what I mean. Like I mean, because it, it's an OSHA issue. Yeah, yeah, which I thought was that's just amazing. But um, she wanted to let everybody know that comments on the proposed rule change are going to be due on November twenty sixth, um, and uh, you know so. If you're listening to this, go to the uh, consumer vo consumer voice website, and they'll always always have access to where you can go and post comments. Uh, for example, last year we all posted comments about the uh, the delay of the implementation of the new rules that's supposed to come out in 2016, 2018, and 2019. Um, they didn't, and so we all got to post comments there. And then um, one of the other the, one of the other rollbacks that Robin mentioned was that um, currently, and this is actually one of the new regulations based on what happened in Hollywood, Florida, um, in 2016, but or 2017, 2017. It was 2017 because at the last consumer conference that I went to, we actually got to hear. And, and visit with uh, Debbie Wasserman, Des Schultz. Debbie Wasserman Schultz as talk a, about it. As a result of the tragedy that happened in Hollywood, Florida, the regulations were changed mm -hmm. that there needed every nursing home needed to have an emergency preparedness program, which included includes a plan, um, policies, procedures in place. Yeah. In, in case of something kind of struck like that. Like and backup think, generators. When a hurricane hits, they need to have backup generators and they need to have a, 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 a contingency plan for when the power goes out. Right, and then training um, yeah. under those circumstances. And that, and that would have been, and that and it, and it the current rule as it stands that that needs to be reviewed every year. Now the proposed rule is to, um, is to make that, the, as far as the planning goes and the training, every two years. And the comments for that are due on November 19th. And I'll, if possible, if Gene, Gene hopefully can put this up on the screen, but hopefully, I'll have a link to where we can go because again, Consumer Voice is providing model language for its citizens to, to to weigh in on those with their comments, weigh on, weigh yeah. in on the on the proposed regulations. So those two things that I that just struck me as like, man, we're, if we're always fighting to mm -hmm. you know, to keep from going backwards with these with these regulations, and it's it's always and amazing. comments matter. Comments do matter. Comments. It was it. They got over ten thousand comments in 2015 about the uh, the proposed new regulations for 16 and beyond. I mean, it it, it matters to them and it, and it tells Congress, it tells CMS like, hey, this is something that uh, people care about, we ought to do this because they're using taxpayer money. So make your voice heard. That's right. And so Will, you also presented, quickly, what did, what did you talk about? I talked about um, one of actually one of the proposed rules from 2016, which has to do with banning um, pre-dispute mandatory arbitration clauses, and um, you know it's it, it's something that we deal with all the time because at the end of the day we're trial attorneys, and we can't take a case to trial where it, uh, it sees the light of day. I mean, because the greatest disinfectant for uh, bad deeds is sunlight. And so on the cases that we take, we expose them to the public and we expose them to that sunlight by taking them to a jury trial. We can't do that if there is a binding arbitration agreement. And a lot of these arbitration agreements are signed without any explanation. And many times the family doesn't even know what they're signing. I mean, you got to think, you're putting your mom in a nursing home. It's not something that you want to do. 
It's an extremely emotional situation. And they've got you signing all these different documents. You don't know what's what. Most of the time, I'd say the overwhelming majority of the time, people don't even realize that they've signed away their right to a jury trial. That's right. Um, and so in, yeah. if anybody is, is interested in either, if they were attended it, are either interested in listening to it again, or if, you're, if you haven't been able to make it to the National Consumer Voice um, Conference this year, we're actually going to have that on next week as an episode yeah. of the podcast. Will's presentation about um, arbitration clauses and, and, um, and nursing homes. So, but I think that from a, just a general standpoint, um, this is, again, this is my first year going to the Consumer Voice Conference. And I've had a great time. I've met a lot of great people. And most especially, I've learned a lot of new things about nursing home regulations, nursing home advocacy, or resident advocacy. The whole board, uh, the whole thing, it's been fantastic. And I highly recommend um, if you're a, a, an advocate for residents of nursing homes and facilities, living facilities, then please check out the Consumer Voice. It's fantastic. And if you yeah. are um, if you are an attendee to the Consumer Voice Conference and you're actually listening to this podcast for the first time because of it, let me give you uh, a, a really quick education. So this podcast can actually be um, watched or listen to. We are available on a YouTube, on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. You can also go to nursinghomeabusepodcast.com and watch all the episodes. I think we're at, this was episode 92. Um, so we've got 92 episodes. We our, our podcast is dedicated to um, educating families of residents of nursing homes. So we deal with all types of subjects that fall within that rubric. We talk about um, the signs of sepsis. We talk about the five things that you need to ask your the the your the resident's nurse. The whole the whole thing. Um, but those are the topics that we talk about. Um, but if you can't watch us, you can also listen to the podcast. And the podcast is available. A new episode comes out every Monday morning. Um, it's available on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Music, uh, Pod Pod Puppies. Wherever, wherever you go to get mm -hmm. your podcast, pod hub, whatever they have, we're, we're there. And we would really encourage you to, to listen, um, share with your friends, um, uh, review it, like it, hopefully like it. Um, but that's a resource for you. Um, again, we have a lot of individuals that are on yeah. the board or are members. And of contact members. us and tell us your story if you've got something interesting. I mean, as far as we're concerned, you know, long-term care ombudsmen are just the backbone the front uh, line. The front line. I mean, you guys are the the, the 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 soldiers in this war. I mean, it's it could not be done without you guys. So if you've got stories you want to tell, if you've got ideas, let us know. That's right. So, yeah, we want this podcast to be a resource for families that have loved ones in nursing homes. And, and yeah. we, we do that in part by the knowledge that, that you guys have. Yeah. So... Um, if you if you if you have a topic or, or have a story that you want featured on the podcast, let us know. Um, we'd be happy to hear it. We're happy to put it on. But um, we're gonna have to. We're we're actually like I said, we're in the hotel room. We're about to jump back into the the to, conference to the conference and, and learn a bit more. But we just wanted to stop and share this with you. Um, and we we thank you for listening. And with that, we will see you next time. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. Nothing said on this podcast, either by the host or the guest, should be construed as legal advice, nor is intended to create an attorney-client relationship between the host or their guest and the listener. New episodes are available every Monday on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube and our website, nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. Again, that's nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. See you next time.